tonight on your world. In the months after Natalie Holloway disappeared, Yaron Vandersloot and his father were both thrown in jail. They were released because of a lack of evidence and neither was charged with a crime. Paul has been officially cleared. Now they've been served a lawsuit. Will it ever make it to court? Let's bring in our legal panel. Former prosecutor Jim Hammer is live in Sacramento. Criminal defense attorney Jeff Brown is live in Tampa. And in Los Angeles, victims' rights attorney Gloria Allred. Jeff, first this watch list, um, which is sort of curious. That, why would he be put on a, a watch list, uh, Yaron Vandersloot? Well, our federal government has the ability to put people on watch lists that they want to talk to or put people of interest, perhaps their threats. It sounds like what they put him on this list because the FBI wanted to talk to him if, they, if he ever stepped foot in this country. So, But he uh, and did I agree and they that. didn't. It's, but he did and they didn't. Yeah, exactly. So how good is that watch list? Uh, I just had a client of mine come through the Canadian border when there was outstanding warrants on him and somehow he passed right through the border without ever being touched. So. Uh, you know, I think someone needs to look at our homeland security to see how all this is occurring. Gloria, do you think this case will ever get before a jury? Well, the question is, if it does get before a jury, where is it going to be before a jury? Because the plaintiffs are from Alabama and Mississippi. The defendants are from Aruba and perhaps the Netherlands. The acts that are alleged to have occurred have occurred, if they have, in Aruba. So there is really no connection with the state of New York except that they were served there. So even if there's personal jurisdiction over them because they were served, the question is, was there subject matter jurisdiction? And ah. also, is and, that and a I convenient th forum? <laughs> you is that a convenient the forum of the for that case Gloria. And, and, for the and case Jim, to be tried? And I think, Jim, uh, <laughs> Gloria just outed herself for not watching the show last night not, uh, on the subject <laughs> matter jurisdiction. Panel, Shame Gloria. on you, Gloria. We had a law school lesson well, tonight, Gloria, where a professor yeah. who's a fan of the show actually wrote in during the show and told us New York has personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction. The only question is what we call forum nonconvenience in English. That's inconvenient forum. Bottom line well, is that, a judge, if he chooses to or she said. chooses to, no, no, you said there's no subject matter jurisdiction. There clearly is well, in New I York. Said that, no. If a judge wants to, a he can keep this case in New York and there'll be a jury trial. That's the bottom line answer. I have, a, I have a well, question. I said, I said there's a question, but there's also the forum nonconvenience issue because ah. all of the witnesses, all of the evidence is elsewhere, not in the state of New York. All right, let me, let me, ask, you all, let me ask you all a question and you can then anyone can jump and give me an answer. On this, this issue of, for, of inconvenient forum, John Q. Kelly says he has everything here in the United States to try the case. He doesn't need anything in Aruba, except that as fact. I don't know if it's true or not. That's the first thing. The second question is, does New York have sufficient interest in this to take jurisdiction or to make it a convenient forum in their minds? Should New York care? New York has apparently, it provides about 17% of the tourism dollars and people in Aruba. Is that, is, would that ever qualify in your minds as a sufficient interest by New York State? No, absolutely not. I, I think there's no question this case gets tossed. And if it doesn't get tossed, then they're going to enter a default judgment. The bottom line here is Beth Twitty says she filed this lawsuit to get answers. I'll say this now and I'll stand by it. There will not be a single answer given in this case. It'll never get that far. It's never going to get to a jury. There's no way that any lawyer is going to let uh, Juron and his parent and his father come over here to answer questions. They'll let them get a default judgment if they have to. There's never going to be an answer in this case. Just, just, so, that we can at least, just so we can at least cash in in case you're wrong, uh, what do the rest of us get on the panel, <laughs> Jeff, since you went to see? We're so adamant. What do we get? Dinner? A any, any donation to the charity of your choice. All right, uh, indeed. Well, the, All right. the other question, Greta, is what effect will it have on the prosecutor if a civil case is filed? Will the prosecutor feel that now they don't have to worry about the criminal case because Beth may get some answers through a civil case? I hope that's not the result, but I'm concerned. I know what, I've never